Good morning everybody. This is a very simple video, really very simple and it'll be quite short. I just was hoping to talk to you about oil pressure again in a Gardner engine. And at the outset I want to admit that one, what I'm going to talk to you about is not peculiar to Gardner, you'd find it in other engines as well. But also, again, once more, I'm not an expert. I don't want to be referred to as an expert or treated as an expert. All I'm doing is showing you what I see in front of my eyes. Now, I'd like to introduce you to our cameraman for today. <laughs> this is Madeleine. This is my, my granddaughter, Madeleine. She lives in Paris, so she's got quite good English and good French as well. Do you want to say hello to the people? Hello. <laughs> So Madeline's going to be our cameraman, our cameraman for, for today. I'm just going to do a super job. So that's the oil pressure pump, which is down in the sump. So that's continually submerged in oil. For that reason, they give no bother at all. So that pump lifts oil out of the sump and pushes it up through the internals of the crankcase. You'll see it, it's illustrated by that dotted line there up into that main oil feed pipe and up to the pressure release valve. From the far side of the oil pressure release valve, it comes down that pipe there and down back down into the crankcase and down into the main oil feed pipe for the crankshaft. Again, you'll see it with that dotted line. This is an actual engine. I think it's a 5LW. You can see there where the oil is fed up into the main journals. Uh, and you can also see there the end caps which fit on to the conroads. Enough theory, now for the practice. We'll have a couple of crankshafts here. Uh, these are what you refer to as the main journals. See, this, this particular crankshaft is a one, two, three, four by six. This is from uh, 6LX or 6LXB engine. So as you've seen in that diagram, the oil is fed in onto that crankshaft in such a way that the whole crankshaft is actually full of oil. The whole crankshaft is full of oil. Madeline, if you can just you can just home in here, Madeline, please. You can see here that the big end uh, journals have holes in them and the conrods themselves also have a hole in them. So that conrod is rotating like this with the crankshaft. So oil is fed up through that hole, through this hole and right up through the centre of the conrod until it comes out of the little hole here. Can you see that? Do you see that little hole in there? So that lubricates the gudgeon pin in the piston that's going up and down here like that. So the whole system is completely full of oil at high pressure. The same thing is true of the main journals. Madeleine Pet, can you over here and maybe just see in here? Again, you'll see a hole there like that. See that hole? And the shells also have a hole. So oil is fed in here and fills the whole crankshaft up. So what this means is that in the big ends and in the main journals, the shells are clamped around this surface here. So that's going around like that. On the mains, it's rotating here like that. Which means that the shells when the shells are tightened in and the nuts here are torqued up to the right torque, then this is quite tight on the crankshaft. I hope you understand that. So the pure oil on the pressure has to feed into that gap. So the tighter the shells are on there, the higher the pressure will be. I hope you've got that clear. So, if the shells get worn, in other words, they're moving out, moving out from where they should be, 
then obviously the pressure will drop. So that's why oil pressure is so important, because oil pressure tells us everything we want to know, really, about the health of the crankshaft. And if you don't have a healthy crankshaft, you don't have a healthy engine. It's as simple as that. It's really very critical. So that's why all the torque uh, on the nuts here has to be exactly right. You can't afford to make a mistake. So I can tell you a wee story about this. We were building a five-cylinder engine, a 5LW. And even before we put the, the, the blocks or anything on, we had the crankshaft all torqued up exactly to the exact settings that it should be. But the crankshaft wouldn't turn. The crankshaft was completely stiff. And we were really racking our brains to, to find, find out why this was happening. We slackened all off the nuts, re-torqued them all again, um, inspected everything, everything was fine. Torqued it all perfect for the second time, still she was stiff. And it was only whenever we took <coughs> the whole crankshaft back out again <coughs> and took out the main shells that we found somebody had used a tipex to write BE, big end, on one of the shells. So you'll see that in this photograph here. BE, just the thickness of the tipex was enough to cause the crankshaft to, in effect, seize up. Probably if we had pressed ahead and started that engine, the crankshaft might have seized. I'm not too sure. So that's how critical it is that the torque settings have to be perfect uh, <clears throat> and the shaft cannot afford to be too worn or the shells can't be too worn. Uh, again, in another video, I've pointed this out, that if the shells here go brown, generally speaking, once they go brown, you know that the crankshaft, you know that the shells are getting worn and you need to address that problem. Oh, that's clear. Right. Now, didn't she do a good job? Wasn't that lovely? And maybe she'll appear again in some future videos and do an even better job. Thank you so much.